Here is Frederick van Amstel, I'm from PUC PR and I'm gonna present pattern-based collaborative design with Cardex. At our university, we have a collection of special card decks that were designed and built by many different designers across the world to share the knowledge about the possibilities in a particular field of design, for example, business model design, philosophy design, UI design, and persuasive strategy design. Well, this Cardex we use a different phase in our challenge-based learning process. For example, the philosophy that card can be used for having big ideas where the uh, business model that can be used for defining a challenge. Students have a lot of enthusiasm, but they don't have experience and they do not know exactly what are the possibilities for their designs. So we share with them through these card decks the, a range of possibilities that some experienced designers have selected and shared through these card decks. And the decks are a very quick and fast way to consult and to get in touch with those possibilities. Our underlying goal of sharing those card decks is actually to help students bridging the gap across different abstraction layers that a software project entails. Software does not happen only at the code layer. Actually, software involves architecture layers, business models, information architecture, the interaction flow, and the graphic user interface. And one decision in one layer depends on the decisions made in underlying layers and also affects decisions in upper layers. And it's very difficult somehow to understand in which layer and realize where you are and where you are going while taking those decisions, design decisions. To help students get acquainted and moving those different abstraction layers, we have offered them those card decks, but we also teach them pattern-based design, which is an idea we draw from uh, two books written by Christopher Alexander and his colleagues at the University of Oregon. Uh, the first book, The Timeless Way of Building, and the second book, A Pattern Language, they describe an approach for um, designing and built environments, so they are architects, and they are describing a concept called pattern, which is an accumulated or a re and a recurrent design strategy that uh, artists and builders uh, have been reproducing along centuries. Therefore, it's called a timeless way of building, the way it was always being built. Each of these patterns is presented in the book in a structured way as a, a connection between a problem and a solution, basically. There are more details to patterns I'm gonna not dwell into now, but the main idea behind of writing those patterns in such huge books is to support clients while discussing with an architect what they want for their building. Alexander and his colleagues thought about patterns as a net, as a, in a very uh, pioneer way. Alexander envisioned a kind of hypertext net connecting those different patterns. In the book, after reading about one pattern, you might get to know other patterns that are linked at the end of each chapter. If you put all of those patterns and connect them together in a visualization like this one, not made by uh, Alexander himself, but uh, by a student that looked at his works, you can see that he had a complexity uh, underscoring the approach and this uh, wholeness of connecting and interconnecting patterns as the main purpose of having a language. That's why they call a pattern language. Every time you pull out a pattern and applies it to a project, you're not meant to apply that pattern isolatedly. You are mean to apply together with other patterns that make sense and are typically used together, making up this whole connectedness thing that Alexander and his colleagues 
uh, considered to be a good project. This idea of pattern has been much more successful and popular in computer science rather than in architecture itself because a gang of four uh, authors they wrote a book called uh, Design Patterns applying the concept to uh, code writing, software code writing. They uh, proposed that some software code were so recurrent that it could be considered a pattern solution. And they identified the most common patterns of that time. And those patterns indeed have shown a very particular timeless uh, existence. Because after 30 years, people are still using those same patterns in different programming languages. Those structures are still with us and the new patterns, of course, but those identified by the Gang of Four, they were still enduring today. One idea that has not been uh, inspired by uh, architecture in computer science, but could also have inspired computer science is the idea of pattern-based design, which is not only having the idea of patterns, but having a process oriented to patterns while you design uh, construction. Alexander described that any architecture environment could be decomposed into a set of patterns. And you can also recompose a new architecture construction from a selection of uh, unitary, unitary patterns. For example, a village, could be decomposed into components, big, larger components like pasture and granary, and pasture can be decomposed into its own parts, and crop fields could be decomposed into many different parts, and so on. So his basic idea of this pattern-based design process, first, define a problem and decompose that problem into small units, small problems, analyze those smaller problems, and try to find smaller solutions to each of those problems and then you recompose those different solutions into um, complete holes and you get a final solution that have everything integrated which makes sense this so alexander called those two different process decomposition and composition and he also mentioned that patterns do not follow strict hierarchy they also overlap uh, that means that you cannot just select one pattern for each problem. You might need to combine different patterns for one problem, but you also might have uh, one solution that for different problems. And this is not uh, straightforward. It's not strictly hierarchical. There's not a one-to-one -one relationship between problem and solution because each problem uh, manifest in a specific situation and the task of an architect or a software designer is to find which patterns does apply to that particular situation and combine those patterns into a coherent whole is the goal of pattern-based design. Now I'm going to come back to the cardex we have shown before and explain how we use that to support pattern-based design approach for mobile app development. First of all, a mobile app development is nothing without a business model. And before students start digging into designing their apps, we stimulate them to think about the business model behind that app, the model that will sustain the business while the app is running. If a team does not have a business car, a business model, then we can flip through the business model car deck and select possible business models that uh, the members of the team might consider for this app uh, project. After they have sorted through the card deck and selected some business models, they have filtered all the, some of the possibilities that are uh, indeed relevant for the projects and they might now have a more uh, uh, a more oriented discussion uh, about their business model. I use a lot of different card decks and they might help 
with different phases in the mobile app development uh, process. If you follow a challenge-based learning approach, you may use philosophy card decks for being, having big ideas, business model card decks for having defining challenges, the value card deck for asking essential questions, and uh, UI patterns and uh, persuasive pattern cards for devising solutions. You can use that for drawing random cards in each of these um, decks and having to come up with a new solution. It's a kind of a quick exercise for going through all the steps for a mobile app development process, uh, touching upon different abstraction layers and having to come up with um, a new solution. This is just a creativity exercise that stimulates students thinking in different abstraction layers and also improvising with constraints that they might not be able to change in a project where the challenge is already set up or the solution is already set up and so on. After drawing the cards, following this random exercise, students they might need to create a business model or they might need to create a working model that um, synthesize all the ideas that have drawn from the cards. And I use for that uh, Rio Clay. I find it very funny to uh, literally model business with clay. This can also be done using Lego and the Lego series play approach that emphasize communicating through metaphors. A metaphor using Lego is quite simple. You pick up a piece for a tree and then the tree piece becomes um, a stand for uh, sustainability, greenery, green ideas for growth or uh, anything that is related to the concept of tree. And you can build an, a very complex um, model about uh, the uh, mobile app idea you have using metaphors. Another way of using Cardex is to find a specific uh, pattern that applies to a particular situation, as I said before. You can uh, create a situation actually drawing random cards, uh, as I, I showed before, as well, and having them all the cards uh, displayed in a table where students can pick up and select and discuss which does apply is a very interesting learning opportunity for them. After they have selected some patterns, they might turn the general solution included in the pattern in the card, uh, they might turn into a specific solution for the project they are working on and they might replace or put on top of the card uh, their solution that can be written or drawn in top of a post-it for example like in this picture you can see that this team is following complete pattern based design process for the app design uh, on the top of the table you can see the original legal conceptual model uh, built to address the three different values that uh, business must uh, generate. You can see a philosophy card on, on the right, a business model card also on the right. And then in the central part of the table, you see a lot of uh, UI uh, user interface cards with the implementation, the specific implementations that the designer students are making um, from the suggestions made by these cards. And after they have devised how to implement those different cards, they might compose it a new interface, a completely new interface, a whole uh, solution, integrated solution uh, in a different uh, surface, for example, a piece of paper or a whiteboard. And they might also drop some ideas that came from the uh, cards. They might also change their ideas, but they speed up the whole creative process by uh, taking ideas from those cards and considering possibilities they might not have considered if they haven't checked out the card decks. So I have presented here how you can use card decks. These card decks I have shown as examples are just examples. You can use any card decks that you have uh, around to support a collaborative 
pattern-based design process. That's it. Thank you for your attention.